Boom. <laughs> What's up, everybody? You're watching The Beast, and this is Primal Rage. Yeah. So, everybody, uh, two trailers have been released for the upcoming MCU's uh, newest installment, uh, I guess for Phase 4, for the Eternals. Okay. Okay, first off, why the Eternals? I mean, if you look at what Disney... Disney owns, like, almost all the Marvel shit. And they have Spider-Man worked out in some deals where they can include Spider-Man in the MCU because it's going to work out for Sony anyway. It's their guy to do with whatever they want. Besides, they make uh, more, um, even more money working deals in through Disney. So it's a win-win for them. But my point is, you have big Marvel group names because now we now we've ended the the first round of the MCU movies uh, with, with the Avengers with their top three uh, guys and their trilogy movies of Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor, all very successful. Uh, some are a little debatable with like Iron Man two and uh, Thor Dark World or. Or Iron Man 3. But overall, very, very successful. Um, so, Disney has the X-Men. Okay? There is a lot of movies uh, that you can pull from the X-Men. There's a lot of really good, powerful mutants that you could do movies on. To bring uh, characters together into an X-Men movie to bring on a big threat. Now, if we all saw the Avengers, a lot of the questions is going to be when you do Fantastic Four or when you do, say, the Eternals or you do the X-Men. Well, where were they? Where were they, Beast, uh, when Thanos was destroying everything? Easy. Uh, the Avengers that we watched happen in an alternate universe this is why this spider-man uh tom holland uh his uncle ben moments his uncle ben was tony stark not the official uncle ben that's why mary jane was a black chick that's why flash thompson was some indian kid who was rich and he was a dickhead uh to peter parker so everything happened with that universe where this can all bring in eventually down the road to bigger storylines combining all the MCUs at one point or another. So this gives you all the room to play with superhero group movies. Um, but why? When you... The Fantastic Four people, probably one of the most legendary superhero groups of all time. The Fantastic Four, Sue Storm, Johnny Storm, uh, Mr. Fantastic, uh, Ben Grimm, The Thing. And one of the best Marvel villains, in my opinion, Doctor Doom. Which we all know by past movies that the Fantastic Four needs, it needs a polish. It needs to be taken off the shelf. It needs to be done and done right. Kevin Feige can, can, without a doubt, throw in, forget the diversity bullshit, put in some qualified directors that know the resource material and that are going to make a real-world action-packed Fantastic Four movie. We almost got it in the early 2000s. It wasn't bad. Mind you, it wasn't bad. And we had Chris Evans was Johnny Storm. Which he, he wasn't bad. But it, it did need it did need some more stuff. But uh, like 2014's Fantastic Four was just a total political correctness nightmare. Not even Stan Lee wanted to be in it. My point being, you're going to launch the MCU Phase 4. Okay. 
why would you, instead of going with either the X-Men, going mutants, or going with the Fantastic Four, these are groups everybody knows, you go with the Eternals? You go, look at this group! This looks fucking generic! Oh yes, look at the diversity play card we got going on here. Yeah, I'm sorry, who the fuck are these actors and actresses? <laughs> Oh, mind you, uh, what, the director of this movie? How many movies has she done? How many movies has she done? How many superhero movies has she done? Yeah. Well, she got like one movie under her fucking belt. Well, one thing's for sure. When it comes to uh, Marvel's Eternals, who the fuck heard of the Eternals? Listen, I'm 50 years old. I was reading comic books since I was fucking five. Okay, 45 fucking years, okay? I even had a couple of the original Masters of Kung Fu Shang-Chi, which was nothing more than a rip-off, Marvel's rip-off of Bruce Lee. That doesn't have any powers. But you're going to go with the bargain basement di diversity group that nobody cares I mean, look at this. Look at these costumes. And I'm, I'm thinking when I, when I see, uh, when I see this picture that we're all looking at right now. The only reason they chose this over, see, Fantastic Four and the X Men, is because they wanted to per to push diversity and inclusivity. Well, the director uh, of this movie. Uh, what is she Chinese born here? It says, uh, it's by IndieWire. Eternals could face China release issue over Chloe Zhao backlash. Uh, also, Shang-Chi's at risk. Right now, China is rejecting both Shang-Chi and, uh, and now the Eternals because of a comment about China being full of lies uh, at one of her, uh, at one of her, I don't know, standings. Let's see, uh, let's see where we're at here. Oh, God. She said, it says, uh, backlash against China born Zhao exploded after Golden Globes win for No Man Land. Nomad land uh, in late February due to circulation of two quotes that may have perceived as being anti-China. The first quote was from a 2013 interview found Zhao uh, discussing her interest in movies about the American heartland and saying it goes back to when I was a teenager in China being in a place where there are lies everywhere. And the second quote was a misprint uh that found Zhao claiming the U.S. is now my country. And even though she had actually said the U.S. is not my country, regardless, the incorrect quote went viral and added fuel to the nationalist backlash. So that people need to keep their mouth shut and just promote the movie, just do their job, keep the politics out of it. You got to think about what you... Today's world, you got to think about what you say before you say it. Unfortunately, Hollywood uh, is far from ever learning the lessons. And that's why Hollywood is in the shitstorm that it is. It ain't never coming back, people. It's just like Star Wars, Star Trek, and thanks to Kevin Smith, Masters of the Universe, uh, which will cover the new uh, trailer for the new He-Man, Master of the Universe, uh, in another video. Um... All, all, they're all gone. They're destroyed. Actors and actresses now have are voicing their stupid political, personal political opinions, and nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to hear pe uh, these idiots telling us what to do, telling us to wear the mask, telling us to get the these so-called vaccines. They don't want to hear it. And you have Arnold. Duh, you are worried about your freedoms. But I screw your freedoms. You don't need freedom. Not a need. Just do what you're told. Dang. So, 
Yeah, screw that. Screw that. I do none of that. How about that, Arnold? But they kept voicing their opinions. And then people that take this stuff the wrong way, or they have to hear this crap over and over, they just walk away from it. China's not going to touch this shit. And Kevin Feige is that they need Disney, Hollywood. They need China for these movies. They need it. They need the money. They need the audience. They need this to work. But I don't see this working. So it says Marvel Studios president, Mar uh, Marvel chief creative officer, uh, may it sound like some damn military. <laughs> Kevin Feige suggested the current theatrical release pr uh, plans for Eternals could change. I think the theater would be my preference and Chloe, Chloe Zhao's performance. Kevin uh, Kevin Feige told Variety at the world premiere of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. We will see uh, where we go with this. Now, with that being said, uh, Shang-Chi... Uh, is on a deal with Disney, the movie itself, their so-called, what they were saying is an experiment where I think it's released September 3rd, and it's supposed to be just in theaters for, for like 45 days. I, I think this, I think this movie's gonna flop. Um, I think another, uh, one of the reasons that China, uh, doesn't, uh, rejects the Shang Chi movie is because of the Chinese stereotype, the Asian stereotype character of Fu Manchu. Um, but as Feige kept stating, that character is not in this movie. I think Fu Manchu, from my understanding, was to be Shang Chi's uh, father or uncle or something like that. But he's not present in the movie. But and also uh, why China's rejecting. Shang, the Shang-Chi movie because the character Shang-Chi is bringing his stuff to America to the Western world and this this is like kind of slapping China in the face um, it, it's it's gonna be a shitstorm it's gonna be a shitstorm actor uh, oh, Jesus Christ clean up your site Disney Shang-Chi actor Simon Liu slams Disney CEO Bob Chapek's comments uh, this this guy's a freaking snowflake himself, but this uh, this simp says uh, slams Disney uh, CEO Bob Chapek. Or he said theatrical release of Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings uh, was an interesting experiment during the company's earnings call on Thursday. Uh, Simon Liu struck back, uh, I guess, on Twitter, uh, saying we're not we are not an experiment. No, the the movie, uh, playing the movie this way in the theaters after the pandemic, trying to make a bring the theaters back, trying to bring the audience to get back in the theaters, so these companies uh, that put hundreds of millions of dollars into it could try to. It's kind of like taking the first step forward, and this guy just starts crying. I think Shang Chi is done. I, I think after this movie, I don't think uh, I don't think they're bringing this guy back for Shang Chi. But uh, he says we are the underdog, uh, the underestimated. We are the ceiling breakers. We are the celebration of culture and joy that will preserve uh, after an embattled year. We are the surprise. Uh, I'm fired to f up to make history on September third. Join us. Yeah, I don't think it'll really make much history though. I just, I just, so people just don't really care. Um, look, I like Kung Fu movies, but I like the Kung Fu movies that come from China. Like, I like my Jackie Chan movies. I like watching the old Kung Fu theater movies. Uh, I grew up with that stuff. Um, but Chinese, uh, American made Chinese Kung Fu movies. I don't think it's just going to be right. And who the hell is, is Simon Liu? I never heard of him. I, it, the movie looks boring. It looks basic. It looks like uh, it looks like uh, Crouching Tiger, Walking Dragon, or Flying Dragon, and House of Sticks. Fuck, I don't know those kind of movies. Okay. 
and it's just, there's really no interest. Like, you could be doing Wolverine movies, Disney, and you're going to fuck around with Shang-Chi, but they do this on purpose, people, because they are desperately pandering to China. China doesn't want to be pandered to. They don't want to be pandered to. There is a lot of shit going on in this world, and the last thing that they want is for any of these companies to try to blow smoke up their ass with these movies. I I think uh, I think when you look at the Eternals, I, I think this is a total fucking diversity disaster dumpster fire waiting to happen. We all see this train wreck coming. Obviously, the only reason Disney wanted to do this is because of the, the pander to China with the Asian director that has almost no experience, no experience in fucking comic book movies. But look, we got all the fucking diversity count card all up here, front to be counted. Oh, man, we got the women of color. We got the Asians. We got the Indians. We got the... Sort of maybe straight white dude up there in the front. We got a couple might be confused about their gender. Right in the roll count with their weird, stupid, generic cosplay costumes. And a group that nobody, hardly anybody heard of and absolutely don't give a shit for. Where's Fantastic Four? This is what Marvel uh, Phase 4 is going to be predicated on? You're going to give me fucking shit shows like Shang-Chi and the Eternals? F that. No freaking way. No freaking way. And you got, again, you got this chick directing uh, the Eternals movie. And hit China the wrong way with their comments. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be bad. It's going to be bad. I mean, when you got, you got these uh, diversities, inclusivity... These are the two words, people, that have destroyed sports. There's destroyed businesses, pizza shops, comic books, cartoons, uh, toys, uh, plushies, movies. It's destroyed everything that they inject this poison into. If companies want to make money, then they need to do the right fucking thing. You want us to get excited for Phase 4? Stop giving us shit we don't want to see, Disney. And start doing things the right way. And stop pandering to everybody. Make the movies the right way. Give us some fucking Fantastic Four. The X-Men. Wolverine. Get this shit going. But no, we're going to keep going with this. We're going to keep going with, with some martial arts character and some other one millionth martial arts movie we don't give a shit for. How did fucking Snake Eyes do? No, Snake Eyes is a white guy. But no, we got to stereotype Asians again. The only Asians can be ninjas. So now Snake Eyes, they're taken out of the theaters and already going to push it on uh, digital and DVD Within a week or so, I think, I think, that's how bad the movie industry is. Because the, the people in charge doing this crap, they keep pushing the politics. They're not going to get our money. And then when we, when we add our criticism to this, we're just simply review bombing. Like, our fucking comments don't count. Our criticism don't count. And Simon Liu... Well, he better get his shit together. But otherwise, this, you ain't going to see this guy in no more movies. You're probably not going to see him in another Marvel movie. You know, Scarlett Johansson shot her mouth off with the lawsuit. She should have kept her mouth shut. Now, Disney seems to maybe have blacklisted this bitch. And, uh, well, I hope it was worth it. You know, none of these people really bring any superior acting skills to these movies. Uh, the costumes are boring. The groups are boring. Nobody cares about Phase 4. In my honest opinion, I think superhero movies ran their course. Just like the politicians, just like the actors and actresses in Hollywood have run their mouths. And now they are in a world of shit. Because we the fans have turned our backs on this. And the toy aisles are devastated. So bad, the toy companies now don't know what to make to put on the shelves. The distribution 
is destroyed toy companies. That's why when you go down and you see the where Star Wars is, only like a few fucking dark sabers, a couple of weird Rise of Skywalker plushies, and that's it. That's why you're looking over at Marvel now. It's all wiped out. And of course it's all Hasbro. It's all wiped out. All this shit that's not selling like Shang-Chi. So what's next for Hasbro? You're going to make us a shitload of fucking Eternals crap that's going to take its place alongside of Shang-Chi? We'll find out. Anyway, I find it funny. On my final note here. I find it funny... That in a week or so will be released to Shang-Chi. And you don't hear nothing about it. They're not. They should be jacking the trailers up. for Sha- Everything you should see when it comes to trailers should be Shang-Chi. 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 They should be giving you doses and more doses and trying to sell this movie. And they're not. And in a week or so, this movie's going to be released. Nobody's going to care. And like Black Widow, this thing's going to be a memory that we're going to soon forget. And the Eternals, it's going to fall right in symmetry. That one's going to come and go, and no one's going to care. You don't got Tony, you, got, you don't got Robert Downey Jr., Iron Man, selling this shit no more. Nobody cares. Uh, hey, Shang-Chi, Legend of Ten Rings. Yeah, is uh, Iron Man going to be in this shit? No, fuck it. But at the Eternals, man, we got do we got Spider Man? We got Iron Man in here? Is there Thor? No, fuck it. This has no chance, people. This has no chance, and you heard it here. So leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this on pop culture, then waste no more time. Hit that subscribe button and get us me over a hundred subscribers so I could bring the Strain Skull in here. We could do some live streams. You could come and hang out with me and Strain Skull. We're going to have a lot of laughs. We're going to hit a lot of topics. We're going to have a lot of fun. So until next time, for all of you out there, get your rage on, baby. Good night.